Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have five new coastal DIYs for you. I used all supplies from the Dollar Tree and we have a lot of fun sea creatures today. So let's get started. The first one, I want to make a large sign for my home and I want it to be a seahorse sign. So you guys know I love crafting with these wall shelves. What I notice is sometimes they have a nice wood grain like this and sometimes they're just plain like that. So I'm trying to use like similar ones for one project, but what I'm gonna do is put three of these signs together to make one large seahorse sign. And I've got a lot of plans for it. I didn't want it to be just the small seahorse sign by itself because it's gonna be pretty special. So I think we're gonna have to make a sign to display it. So these signs are great. Um, I'm just going to sand the holes that are drilled there for the string on the side. Sometimes they're a little bit rough, but easy peasy. I do love the wood grain on that, but I actually want a blue background. So after I glue them together, I'm just doing a bead of hot glue and just gluing them together. They're nice and thick. It's gonna provide a nice sign that's sturdy, I don't need a bracer or anything from the back. The Gorilla Glue, hot glue holds it fine. So I'm gonna paint it, but I only want to kind of like paint stain it a little bit because I still wanna get some of that beautiful wood grain through it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just using Caribbean Blue acrylic paint and I'm just kind of doing a sloppy paint job. I want some of the wood to show through. And then I follow that up with a baby wipe to kind of wipe off the excess kind of similar just to mixing it with water um that way you can still see that wood grain through it I think it's going to give it ni a nice distressed coastal beachy vibe and I love DIYing with these signs um they do have the holes in the sides um from the shelves um and you can leave that because that is kind of a beachy vibe like the boards like that but I think I am gonna fill it in just a little bit just to make it more finished, but I think that looks pretty good. So these are the little string hangers that come with the shelf, so we might as well use them. It makes it a lot easier if you wanna start your strings, just put a little hot glue on the end. And what I wanna do is, I just want there to be kind of knots on the front, so I just tie a knot in the front then I am just gonna string it into the next one and tie a knot in the front of that. That way all of the holes eventually will all have little knots in them. I think that's gonna give just a nice little nautical feel and fill in the holes. I know some of you guys, it drives you crazy when I leave the holes open and I'm like, I meant to do that. <laughs> but that's one way to deal with those. But they also have like the skinnier shelves that are even thicker. Um, these are a little bit wider than those, and I love crafting with these. Whenever I see them, I pick up like a stack of like five of them um, because they're just so awesome. Now on this one, I went all the way across to the other side because I want to leave the holes on the top empty um, so that I can make a hanger for the sign. So I just have two more sets over here, and I'm just cutting down. I'm still on that like same piece of string that came with it. Those strings are great. I always save those and use those for crafting. I think I'm gonna be using them a couple times today. But as you can see, I have plans for that seahorse. I want to do like a shell encrusted seahorse and it turned out so cool. I saw some ideas online and I kind of took them and made them my own. And um, I can't wait for you to see what I came up with. So I'm gonna take another one of the hangers. This time we're making the hanger for the top. And I like to feed in from behind, tie in the front, um, just because it hangs better, and that's kind of why I did the knots on the front on all the other ones. That way they all just kind of have knots, just for fun. I just make it how long I want it, and tie it, and now we can start preparing the seahorse. The seahorse is a great sign. It does say like sea on it with a little star and have lines on it. 
and I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see that in the final project because I what I want to do is I want to encrust it with seashells but there might be some areas where like the glue dries clear so I'm just gonna solve that just by crafting on the back just got to get this tag off sometimes these kind of things come right off sometimes they make you work for it <laughs> But I think that sign is going to be just the right size to hold the seahorse. And it's going to kind of be an offset design, but they'll leave me enough room to put a word down the side as well. So just using hot glue all over the front, which is now the back of our seahorse, I center it on the sign. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to center it or not because I knew it was going to be kind of offset because we're gonna use one of these Lua skirts from the summer section at the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna make a really cool like design here on the seahorse. I saw this idea online, if I can find it, I think it was on Etsy, um, a very, very ornate seahorse. And it kind of had like a, you know, like a raffia mane, like, you know, like a horse's mane. And I thought I could totally recreate that with some of these little grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. So I want to start it like right here, that cool pattern, bumpy pattern that you see on the back of the seahorse. That's where it's going to start. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the twine just to make it a little bit easier. I did kind of push them all together so there's like no twine spaces in between. And I'm just going to start hot gluing it right here, like when the big bump starts right there, but not doing the tail part. Now it gets a little trickier here. I do want to make this part longer because this is like the little fin on the back of the seahorse. So I want that to have even more raffia. I tried to kind of go around, but it wasn't really working. And so I just decided to go straight across and not really worry about that because it is gonna be covered up by the raffia anyway. I keep scooting those along the grass skirt. So again, no twine in between. They're all right next to each other. And then I keep hot gluing it around like the top of the seahorse. And I want it to stop right about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my grass skirt. It's looking pretty fun already, isn't it? <laughs> I thought this was so cool and um, now the only thing I didn't like is some of the like curves that I went around I thought I that there was a little bit like um, too much blue showing through like a little bit too much space in there so I do go in here after I finish off the top here and I'm just gonna start like pulling off pieces of the grass skirt and kind of filling in all the holes. So I kind of comb it out a little bit and kind of see where I need some more of those. I used this grass skirt in another project today too. I love crafting with these. Um, when they're attached to the twine like that, it just makes it so much easier to work with than working with raffia. So I think two there, because I definitely had a lot of blue showing through there. And then I'm just gonna keep working my way down the seahorse filling in any obvious holes with more of that raffia. And I'm leaving it tied. I'm just pulling it off of the jute twine. And then what I want to do is I want to go around the entire silhouette of the seahorse with Dollar Tree rope. And I think we'll be able to disguise all of the little tied portions um, with the rope. So I think that looks pretty full, right? And yes, it's way, way, way too long. So now it's time to cut it. I'm trying to like get a differentiation between the longer part and the shorter part. So this part of the mane is going to be short. And then I'm going to gather the part here where the fin is. And that one's going to be longer. And then the rest of it all the way around the top of the head is going to be short too. I thought this was just a fun little coastal effect for our little seahorse. Kind of giving him a real like horse-like mane but using some beachy, beachy raffia. So I'm digging it. 
This is a rope I'm going to use. It's a nine and a half foot decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner one. And then we're just going to start here um, where there isn't any raffia. I thought it would be easier to start on the easier side here and go around the face. Now be careful putting down too much hot glue. The snout was a little tricky to um, work around because I was trying to get it to the edges. As you can see, it didn't really want to take that like little fluted shape at the end. So I'm just going to have to get it as close as I can. And then I'm just going to keep hot gluing that around. The reason I used the skinnier brown rope um, as opposed to the thicker is so that I could go around those bends easier with a thinner piece of rope and then just keep hot gluing this all around. What I want to do is like create walls on the side of the seahorse so that um, we can fill the whole thing in with seashells. I'm going to do um, a similar technique to what I did on my anchor wreath um, DIY recently and I'm going to use the same kind of shells too. I think they turned out really pretty. So once I get to the raffia part, I just kind of start hot gluing directly on top of those knots. This rope on this side will be slightly higher, but once we fill it all in with seashells, you won't know any different. I don't want to see the knots. I just want the raffia to be sticking out to kind of hide all the magic and hot glue it all the way around. Now this is what we're going to use to glue down the shells, tacky glue. And these are the seashells we're going to use. These are the little tiny ones that are kind of tan and the little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to go in. I'm going to start on the head and just do a lot of tacky glue. I want a nice thick coat of glue that's going to grab all those shells. And, you know, I had a full bottle that I found and I had um, some partials. I'm thinking I've probably used like maybe three bottles of that and then this is one of the little black like um like it almost looks like a snail shell seashell from the dollar tree and i thought that would be a good eye so i put that one down first and then i'm just gonna start going all around with the little seashells um spreading those out i always like to organize my little seashells um in those glass bottles from the dollar tree by pouring them out in one of the little toy organizers there from the dollar tree but I did have some like of these mixed together with some other colors. And so I'm going to have to go through there and kind of sort those out because I think I'm going to need every seashell I can get. I thought I had like a ton of extra bottles of these, but not of these exact ones. And I got about here and I was like, oh no, <laughs> what if I don't have enough shells? But it all worked out. It all worked out. At first, I didn't want to use the little striped ones that kind of look like zebra stripes on there, but then I gave up and said, ah, I'm going to do it. And so I'm just working my way all the way down, filling it all in. I think I lost a little bit of footage there. I think my camera died, but basically I used all the shells there in the bottle and dumped them on there. And we're just going to keep gluing these all over. I'm just trying to fill in like any holes if I see them kind of making sure that everything is pushed down in the glue and level. Then I'm going to go in with this Dollar Tree spray glue and start gluing from the top. I give it a really good coat of this. Now, I kind of wish I hadn't attached my seahorse to the sign yet because when I did the anchor one, I went and put it in the freezer and it set up and then I could glue the top again. This time it was too big for my freezer, so I had to put it in the refrigerator. And so I'm going to go in with the tacky glue like I did with the anchor thinking, oh yeah, it's all going to be set up, right? And it was not. Like when I started like trying to use my foam brush to like put the glue on there, all the shells were like uh, wanting to come off and like stick to me. And I was like, oh no, yeah, the refrigerator technique did not work near as well as the freezer one did. <laughs> so you might have to let it dry in between coats of glue. I already have it all on there though, so I'm just going to use my fingers and kind of push the glue in between all of the shells because I definitely want everything to stay down and stay glued. Then I go over it with some more of the spray adhesive. 
can't glue it too much. Some of those shells um, are a little bit larger and I really want them to stay put. Now, you know, this is a project that, you know, you're using a lot of glue, so you're gonna have a lot of drying time too. Once I got everything done, I just laid it flat overnight and let it dry for good. But I'm gonna use some of these little Dollar Tree wood letters and I'm gonna spell out sea life here on the side. I thought that would be fun. And since it's not really symmetrical anymore, I kind of had open space over there that I felt like I really needed to put something. Now, at first I was gonna paint those little wood letters white, um, cause I like the contrast of white against blue, but then I put them on there like natural like that. And I thought, hmm, that looks really good with Arafia and the colors that I'm using. So let's just le use them, leave them natural. So I did spray it with another coat of glue on top of my seashells. And then I'm just gonna use hot glue and we're just gonna glue these all the way down. What I found is these wood letters from the Dollar Tree, I always save them. I have a big bag of them. I really wish they sold like just um, some of the more common letters separately because I had a giant bag and I had like no ease. I had to open like another bag and I'm like, I need just vowels, please. But I think that looks really good. And it was even easier because I didn't have to paint the letters. So there is our little shell encrusted seahorse. This is how he looks all dried. See how clear the tacky glue dries. The seashells look beautiful. And I just love the little raffia mane. I think he's so cute. What do you guys think about him? Okay, next DIY. This one's gonna be fun too. I'm gonna use a wood round from the Dollar Tree and we're just gonna start by removing the hanger. I was wondering, you know, if this was going to be thick enough because you know, these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree tend to be thin and it was a little bit bowed as you can tell. It's not really like laying flat. So I thought, oh, the heck with it. I'll just grab another one and we'll put like two of them together. It's gonna make a thicker sign. Maybe we'll lose some of that bowing because I want this to be a really um, durable DIY that I can hang in my home year round. I'm gonna use a combination of some of the Dollar Tree wood glue and um, some of the hot glue. So I do a little wood glue in the middle and then I spread that out and then I just do hot glue around the edges. That way, maybe it'll make it a little bit more permanent. But I try to give it pretty good coverage all around the edges because both of them were kind of bowed. And then I made sure that I lined up the little holes in the top so that I can still attach a hanger. But I'm gonna get a thicker wood round for sure. So that's a trick to use the Dollar Tree ones. Then I'm going over the whole sign with some a Caribbean blue paint again and kind of doing like a sloppy coat and then going over that with a baby wipe like we did before. I want that same kind of beachy vibe, a little bit of the wood grain showing through. And this one was a little rough, so I did have to sand it a little bit. I probably could have done that before. I didn't realize it was so rough. Okay, and we're gonna use some of these wood slices from the Dollar Tree. We use these in my wind chime DIY video as driftwood. So it gave me the idea that I could make like a driftwood sea creature with this. So we're gonna give it a go. I don't know at this point if it was gonna work, but I thought, hey, why not? So I put like three next to each other, and then I start like doing two, and then I start doing one. Basically, I want the shape of a crab. I wanna do a little like driftwood crab. Now I'm gonna need some of the pieces to be cut. So I tried with my miter scissors and I had some success, but it was hard. They're kind of thick for the miter scissors, honestly. And I made like a smaller piece to go in between that one. And I'm just gonna kind of, I don't want it to be like such different sizes. So I thought I would fill it in with some half pieces here to make it more gradual, like the shape of the crab. And then we can use the different wood slices to make little crab legs. Crabs have 10 legs. 
including their like little pincher arms. So I just start like kind of laying that out to see if that's gonna all fit on the wood round, and I think it is. And I do plan to kind of segment those legs to make them look a little bit more crab-like. And so I'm just gonna start by hot gluing on. I'm gonna start here at the bottom. I like how the wood has like a little bit different finishes. I think it definitely gives you that driftwood vibe. Now, if you had driftwood like this, you could totally use that as well. But I love these. I'm finding all kinds of uses, and I use a different version of these wood slices today for another DIY as well. So as you can see, the bottom row was just one, and then I had like one and a half, and then I had two, and then I was trying to decide if I wanted to do two again, and then I'm like, no, I kind of wanted to be more gradual. So I'll use one of those half pieces that I have to make that more gradual. And I just keep hot gluing on up one piece here at a time. I want my crab to be that like, it's almost like a football shape for the body is what I'm wanting. And I don't want all the smaller ones to be like in the middle on top of each other. I want it to look more random. That's why I put that one over on the left side. So again, I want it to be a little bit more gradual. So I am gonna try cutting this again Sometimes the miter scissors worked on these and sometimes not so much, but it was difficult. <laughs> kind of like cutting um, the little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree with them. But it does work if you really want it to. So I am just gonna cut a few more pieces here just to get me that perfect shape I'm looking for. I'm thinking that would be good. And I just kind of keep problem solving one piece at a time. Um, putting it together a little bit like a puzzle. And you guys know I usually drift, um, craft with that driftwood from the Dollar or not the Dollar Tree, Target. Um, and you could totally do that with this too, but I want, totally wanted to see if I could make something cool with these little wood slices from the Dollar Tree. So look out for these. Even one of my smaller stores had these in stock in the crafter square so i'm still cutting pieces trying to make it a little bit more gradual than my like initial setup was there until i'm happy with it and then i just keep gluing these on this was i think my son's favorite i don't know he had a lot of favorites today because we're going to do a lot of sea creatures but i think he said this one was his favorite so I had two half pieces left over, and then I was like, yes, I need to segment the legs, so I need to start cutting these down, but I'm tired of using the miter scissors, so I actually did go use my saw, just because I'm gonna have to cut so many here. But there, I'm just gonna cut them in half and make little segmented legs. I think that's gonna make it look way more crab-like than if they were just straight. So I just go and I cut some more in half, so the crab has like three legs kind of pointing back usually, and then one set forward, and then another set here at the front that has like little pincers, right? So I'm gonna go cut some more down. I'm trying to figure out how many I need. I thought if I put two together, you could kind of get that like crab pincer look like that. And then I thought for eyes, we could use some of those little wood beads from the Dollar Tree. I got some of these that are like kind of stained um, brown. And if you set them up like that, I think they make perfect little crab eyes. Now I wasn't too happy with like the pincer arms. I thought they needed to be longer. So I decided to go in with the full wood slice for those. And I think that looks even better. Looks like a crab, right? And then I had another half piece, so I might as well use that there at the bottom to kind of finish off the bottom of that crab shape. <laughs> He's so cute. At first, I didn't think I could pull it off. I didn't think it was really going to look like a crab. And my son's like, well, what else would it be? It's definitely a crab, right? Oh, my goodness. And so I'm going to go ahead and just start hot gluing these one at a time. Your girl is beat. I am so tired. Today I was replacing all of the screens in my Florida room and it was so hot outside and they, they needed to be replaced for a while since the hurricane in the fall. And um, 
They've been driving me crazy. And so now it's wonderful out there. It's mosquito free. Yay. And it's so nice out there this time of year. And we are expecting a house full of company here in a couple of weeks. So I definitely want to get that room ready. My son's graduating from high school. So we have all kinds of family visiting from the Midwest. We'll have a house full of people. Okay, so we got them all glued down. I'm gonna use some of that um, string that we used from the shelves because I had that left over. That's gonna make a perfect little white hanger. You could always use twine or whatever you've got. And again, I just hot glue the ends to make them easier to feed through the holes, especially here that I have to go through two signs. I do plan on framing this out, but I definitely need to get the hanger on there first. And sometimes if you still have trouble getting it through there, one of those little Cricut weeders can do the trick to kind of like force it through there if you need. And this one was a little bit easier. Now I'm just gonna pull them through and tie them off exactly how long I want them. And then we'll go in and kind of finish off the edges. I always like the wood rounds, but sometimes I like them to have like more of a finished edge and so for that I want something else coastal right he's so cute I love this crab um, so I'm gonna use some of the Dollar Tree white nautical rope and this is the thick kind uh, the six foot I think and we are just gonna wrap that all around the edges of our sign I think it's gonna be the perfect like final beachy touch to this one and I think this is gonna look great hanging in my home. I have like coastal everywhere and I know you guys are really digging the coastal DIYs and I'm like looking at everything I made and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I have enough walls in my house. I'm gonna have to get generous. <laughs> I donate, a, you guys always ask what I do with all of my DIYs and I do donate um, my DIYs that I don't have room for because I just don't. I, you know, I do have a little bit of seasonal storage from um, year to year, but my house is just not large enough to store it all because I have made like over 300 videos here on YouTube. So I have made a lot of DIYs <laughs> and I love every minute of it. So I'm just doing a bead of hot glue all the way around and securing that white rope. Kind of started at the bottom just so the seam would be down there. And you can kind of like, you know, work with that, kind of glue those little fibers together, um, let that cool off, and then you can kind of like shape it a little bit to hide the seam a little bit, make it not so obvious. But what do you guys think about my little driftwood crab? I think it's so fun. And I love the beachy blue background. I think that really brings him out. And this is how he turned out. I think my favorite part about him is like his little crab eyes like peeking out. I think that's so cute. But another fun DIY using these little um, wood slices from the Dollar Tree. I'm trying to think what else you could use for that. I guess any kind of dowel if you cut it down to size. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group. I have it linked below. Please come join us over on Facebook. You can see what everybody's making. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I try to post on all of those. Okay, you guys remember these? We're using them again because I wanted to make another sign. And I love making my own signs with these shelves from the Dollar Tree because you can make a sign exactly the size that you want you don't have to cover up any like old dollar tree sign with glitter and stuff on there you know what i'm talking about so this one is going to be a little smaller than the seahorse sign and so i'm only going to need two of them these have a nice wood grain too now i just bought some more of these today at dollar tree and they are that plain um raw wood that you usually get at the crafter square but I'm totally digging the wood grain. I wish I could find more of those. I'm sure I can. I've been finding these pretty consistently at all of my Dollar Trees. Now this one I wanted to go lighter. So I'm using the Caribbean blue acrylic, but I'm mixing it half and half with white to give me that soft beachy blue. I love that. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of paint both boards, but I don't want full coverage. I want like some of that wood showing through. And we're gonna make another coastal beach creature sign. 
This one turned out so cute. I made this initially to go outside, but you know what? I think I might be able to use this inside because it's adorable. So I got them both painted. I was waiting on my heat gun to get hot, or my hot glue gun to get hot. And I just went ahead and painted them first, and now we're just gonna hot glue the two together. Just an easy sign. Now on this one, I'm going to make a sea turtle. So I'm gonna use this rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner brown rope. And I thought we could do like a rope sea turtle on the sign and um, use another one of the wood slices from the Dollar Tree for its shell. So this was really fun. It was a little experimental, but it totally turned out. You know, I'm not gonna miss an opportunity to make a sea turtle because I love a sea turtle. So I kind of cut off enough rope. I think that's gonna make the outer shell and it is a little fuzzy. So I'm just gonna burn off any of the fibers that are sticking out there just with a lighter. And then I'm gonna kind of start in this corner and kind of do like the pointy shape of like a sea turtle tail back here. I don't actually make the sea turtle tail separately. I just kind of point it back there just to make it a little bit easier. And then I want like the sea turtle shell to go up and then come down and point there at the tail. So I just go ahead and glue down the tail part first. And then it's a little tricky um, to get this to lay out how I want it. So I'm kind of just gluing one part at a time. I glue the top of its shell right there. And then I can kind of work my way down and glue around the right side of the shell there. And I kind of want it at an angle like this because I want it to look like the little sea turtle is swimming. So we got that all glued down. And then I want to go in and do like a um, inner ring here to kind of give it a little bit more definition. So I'm gonna need enough rope to go around it and loop again. That's gonna kind of give it the tail shape, but it's also gonna give it just a little bit more structure around the edges. I do want like some of the blue to shine through though, through it, like his tail's gonna look blue there. And um, like his like flippers and head will look blue because that's like what's underneath of the rope. But that's cool, that's kind of what I wanted. So leaving like a little half inch border around the outside of the shell, I'm just going in again and doing a separate ring like that. Now it's time to make little sea turtle flippers. So I just cut down some rope about the size of a sea turtle little flipper. And using hot glue, we're just kinda kinda try to create that shape here in the back over on the side of the tail and do the back flippers. Now, when I cut that one down, I cut a second one the same size so um, that they would be about the same length. I didn't give myself quite as much room over here for this flipper, but I think it's gonna fit, but just barely. <laughs> and if it needs to hang off, it can just look like it's swimming, it's fine. But I did the blue background because I wanted it to look like it's swimming kind of in the ocean, right? So we're gonna do the same thing here on the front of our sea turtle. I cut down two more pieces of rope and then just using hot glue to get that shape. You could also use like the wired jute from the Dollar Tree, but it's gonna be thinner. And I kind of wanted this all to be like made out of the same kind of rope. That rope can be a little bit messy. <laughs> I have to keep kind of um, dropping the fibers out of it because I wanna make sure that doesn't get glued down. And whenever you're doing a sea turtle flipper, you just kind of want to get it that little pointy um, look. And that kind of makes it look like a sea turtle flipper. When we went to, um, let's see, when we went to the Virgin Islands, we got, went to, I think it was called Coral World, and my son and I got to go swim with the sea turtle in this like pool on the ocean. Um, like a adult sea turtle and we got to touch it and pet it and do all these things. It was like the fundraiser to save sea turtles because normally that's not a thing that you get to do and it was amazing. Okay, so these are the wood slices we're gonna try to use for the shells. 
I thought since these were round, these would be perfect for like little scoots for the back of the seashell so we could do like a little pattern. Now I didn't really plan this out first, maybe I should have, but I got pretty lucky about um, them fitting in here. I'm just trying to see how many I can fit in there and I think that looks pretty good. So I think we came out pretty good, but it's kind of like a puzzle. You got to get it to fit. <laughs> you might want to lay those out first and kind of draw on your lines. But it worked. Now these are also, these wood slices are from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to attach them all to my turtle with hot glue, kind of trying to work a little bit in rows. Um, some of the rows are going to be a little bit curved though. Uh, if you can't find these at your Dollar Tree, I think it would be pretty easy to make this with like any kind of a larger dowel or even maybe even like a plunger handle from the Dollar Tree if you were to cut it down into slices. You might need to stain it a little bit though to get like this beautiful finish. These are already kind of stained, right? And just hot gluing them all down. And now we have our little turtle shell. Now, I thought it looked a little plain. It needed something, right? So I had that grass skirt left over from our seahorse DIY, and I thought, ooh, yeah. He needs like some seagrass that he, it looks like he's swimming through. So we're gonna use that grass skirt to kind of simulate seagrass. So again, I just pulled the knot off the twine of the grass skirt, and we're gonna make some seagrass kind of come up the side of him like that. And it always looks good when you kind of cut it like random heights too. I don't want to cover up the shape of the sea turtle. I want it to look like he's in front of the sea turtle. So like on this one, um, I'm going to cut it off when it gets to like his fin. And then I can always go in and continue that on the other side. Now I do use like a little bit of hot glue to kind of secure those so they'll stand straight up and stick to the sign and not like, you know, kind of fall over not too sturdy but I do still also want it up a little bit a little 3d so there I just cut off another piece so that's like that piece continuing from before but like it's behind the sea turtle and I think that looks pretty cool so I'm going to kind of continue this all around to try to make it look you know like he has a nice background I do like that I didn't paint all of the wood so like I do have a little bit of that wood coming through too I think that is a nice coastal touch so we have like three groups of like seaweed over there and then we can also do some over here and again when I cut them sometimes I cut some of them short some of them long and I kind of just do like a couple tiny dots of hot glue to kind of keep them in place and make them go exactly where I want them to. That one's gonna need to be really short. This one here, short as well. And then I kinda wanna fill this in a little bit just to make it look consistent. And I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more over here And I'm loving him. I'm not going to make a hanger for him because I was planning on putting him outside. But you know what? Maybe I need to put a hanger on him. Because outside I'm going to have to drill into the side of the wall. I don't know where I'm going to put him. But isn't he cute? Is there a little wood slice and rope sea turtle? Everything is from the Dollar Tree. And aren't those little wood slices beautiful? I love it. And I thought it kind of gave me a fun variety of a driftwood feel but it also gave me that like pattern that cool pattern that's like on the back of a sea turtle okay are you ready for another sea creature i thought this ribbon from the dollar tree that's that burlap ribbon they have all the time would make great tentacles for a jellyfish i also have some macrame string that i got at the dollar tree but any white string will do and some of the white burlap from the crafters square section I also got a long skinny sign so I thought we could like turn this vertically and it'd make a great background for a jellyfish. Jellyfish are beautiful. They sting but they're beautiful. So since I'm going to be using it the other way I just went ahead and took the hanger off because it's not going to work. 
And then I'm just gonna cut out a little square of this white burlap, which I'm so glad they got this in because I love crafting with it. I do have white burlap available in my Amazon shop below if you're not lucky enough to find any at Dollar Tree because that's how I've always bought it in the past. They do sell like six inch rolls, I think is what I normally got by there. And then I'm just gonna use a Sharpie and I'm not using a stencil or anything, but I'm just gonna draw out the top of a jellyfish. It's super easy. It's like half a circle, like little wavy lines at the bottom like that. It looks like a jellyfish. And I think that's gonna fit on our sign. So I'm just gonna cut the inside of the Sharpie so I cut all of that color off. And this was kind of an easy thing to cut out, but if it was more complex, a lot of you guys have suggested that if you Mod Podge, this first and let it dry cuts really well with no fraying so there is that but i had pretty good luck on this one so i kind of want to tilt it to the side kind of giving it that jellyfish vibe like it's like undulating through the ocean and i'm just going to leave the background i love these wood signs from the dollar tree i think they're so pretty and i put a layer of mod podge down first and then I put the burlap and then I do Mod Podge over because you can't really Mod Podge it too much. I want it to stay down. And I didn't really have too much fraying there, but I did clean up what I had. And I did use maybe a little bit too much Mod Podge, so I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit here with a baby wipe. And then we can start making tentacles. This one was so easy. This just totally reminds me of like those larger tentacles that come out from jellyfish, you know what I mean? So I thought we probably only have room for like two of them on here because this sign is pretty skinny. So I'm just gonna start here at the top and attach it there. Now I'm not gonna glue it all down, I'm only gonna glue it down here and there. That way it looks like it's like twisting and turning. Some of it's lifted up off the sign, you know, it's switching directions like a little jellyfish tentacle would be. And I think that looks pretty cool. So there's definitely room to do at least one more of those. I initially wanted to do three, but I didn't think I was gonna be able to make it work. So again, I'm gonna start at the top and then I'm just gonna kinda do like a random pattern down like I did before. Just doing a dot of hot glue whenever I want it to like switch directions or kind of like raise things up. And I think that looks pretty good. Now for the rest of the tentacles, I'm using some of that macrame rope from the Dollar Tree. This is awesome, but you could also use like um, any kind of cotton twine. Um, they usually have that in the hardware section if you can't find this, it's gonna be pretty similar. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this. I'm only gonna like attach it in certain spots so that it'll give it that curly shape like a little jellyfish tentacle would have and kind of fill in the left side of the sign with this. Now I probably should have used maybe my more fine tip hot glue gun with this because this hot glue gun does like spill out like a lot of hot glue and I did have to go in and try to clean that up a little bit at the end, but this one's gonna kind of overlap. It's nice and thin, so I think it's okay if it overlaps some of the other tentacles. And again, just a curvy fashion. And then I think I have room for one more right here in the middle. And again, I wanna just make it curve. It's so easy to do by only gluing down some parts of it. And I like the tips to be a little bit curved as well. I think that looks cool. And then I'm gonna have to go in and clean up a little hot glue because again, my little dots of hot glue were um, maybe not so much dots, but I always do that with my heat gun and my Cricut weeder works really well for that too. Now it just needs a hanger, so I'm just gonna take some twine and tie a knot. I have that frame to work with so I can just staple it from the back and it's thick enough to accommodate that. Make a knot on the other side and now we have a new hanger. This was so easy to make and I think it's so whimsical and cool, cute. It wouldn't take up very much room if you had a small place in your home that needs something. It might just need a little jellyfish. So everything came from the Dollar Tree. I think it's nice and simple. No blue on this one, 
just different colors of browns and ivories. But I think the tentacles are really fun. What do you guys think about this one? Okay, let's remake this fish. So this is a fish. They have this every year at Dollar Tree in the summer section. And it is covered with this bright tinsel. You guys know, can't stand the tinsel, but I love the cage underneath. So I'm just going to go in and take it all off. And we were trying to decide what this fish looked like. I thought it kind of looked like an angelfish. And then my son said, no, I think it's like a reef fish. So he's a scientist. I'm also a scientist, if you didn't know that. And so we had to get technical and find out what kind of fish this was. And we found a really good match. I'll show you here in a little bit because we're going to make this one look like it, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to use Dollar Tree rope again. This is the six foot, so it's the wider rope. And I think I needed a total of four packages of the Dollar Tree rope to cover this entire fish. So I'm going to start here kind of in the back of its body. And I'm just going to glue the white rope to the plastic frame. Then I'm going to bend it and come back the other way. That way I can get like coverage. It makes it look like it's kind of like wrapped, but without having to waste all of that rope on the back. And the fins would be in the way as well. I couldn't decide between this. The other method would be to start in the center and just do circles around and around and around until you have like the body part covered. But for the particular fish that we're going to do, it has mostly a white body and it looked kind of, had, kind of looked like it had stripes like this, right? On the side of it, so I'm gonna simulating those fish stripes here. And whenever there is a cage, I just put a hot dot of hot glue, but sometimes I glue it to the rope next to it um, just to keep it a little bit tight like that. And this is how far one package goes. So I'm gonna have to cut it off there. That way I can start at the end. But I decided to start at the other end this time. That way I didn't have two like raw edges of rope together to make it look a little bit better. And again, if you have trouble making that bend with that big rope, if you just glue it to itself with a dot of hot glue in there, it's gonna hold it just fine. So this, this DIY took a lot of rope, <laughs> four packages, and a lot of hot glue, but it was really fun. I've always wanted to do redo one of these fishes from the Dollar Tree, and I think I've had this fish since last year, but they do have them again this year. I just saw them there today. Um, but I never knew what to do with it, so I'm glad that I finally thought of something to do with it. I kind of just wanted that like woven look and make it look way more high-end. So we have the body of the fish covered. Now we need to deal with the fins. At first I was gonna cover them with burlap. Then I thought, no, I think I want it with rope too. So everything's gonna be the same thickness. I think it's gonna look better. So I just go around the outside edge, kind of gluing to the little pegs that's sticking out as well because I don't want them to be seen. Some of them you can kind of still see at the end, but I just trim them off. They're easy to cut off, it's just plastic, right? For this one, I thought it would be easier just to go around the outside like that, hot gluing the rope down, and then I can just keep circling that around in that same shape until we cover up all of the area with rope. Some of those tight corners like that, a little bit difficult with the thicker rope, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm gonna kind of just cut it off and try to fill it completely in using hot glue to kind of put that down in there. Now this little fin here in the front, way smaller, but I'm gonna kind of try to do the same strategy on this one, but this one's not gonna take very much rope. Just one little curly cue, that's gonna fill it up. And I think this looks really cool. I love DIYing anything with Dollar Tree rope. I think it makes it look so coastal and fun. And this fish is gonna go out in my Florida room that I worked so hard on today, making sure all of the screens were either replaced or repaired. What a challenge that was. I found that some of them had to be replaced because um, just with weathering and stuff, we had a lot of weather in Florida. 
um, there just wasn't enough fabric left to, you know, put like this green spline in. No, it was so much work. Okay, for the tail, I'm just gonna go back and forth like I did with the body. I probably could have continued it, but I didn't know at the time that I was gonna do that. And then I'm gonna go all the way here to the back of the tail. And then I'm just gonna clean up any hot glue. It's gonna kind of be a mess on the back, but that's okay. I just peel off any excess hot glue and nobody's gonna see it back there anyway. But it's got that great cage that I can use to hang it. Now, there were a few of the little plastic tabs here that you could still kind of see where the rope didn't cover it completely, but that's okay. I'm just going in with some heavy duty scissors and cutting them off. I even cut off the very tip there because I didn't really want that sticking out. And I hate trimming those things off if I don't have to, but I just trimmed off the ones that necessary. So there's our little reef fish, and this is what we thought it kind of looked like. This is a chevron butterfly fish from Hawaii, so we're gonna give it our best go here. So I'm just gonna use some yellow, I chose kind of a softer yellow, and some black acrylic. And I want this to be really colorful and fun again, because I'm doing this out my Florida room. I'm kind of trying to do fun, beachy vibes out there. And so I think painting it would be good. Otherwise, just the silhouette of the rope would be kind of cool, but I thought it was a little plain. So let's make this fun. So that butterfly fish had a yellow fin on the top and one of his fins on the bottom were yellow. So I'm just going in with a small brush from the Dollar Tree and I'm just painting that rope. The rope, white rope from the Dollar Tree paints really well. You don't have to use chalk paint or anything. Um, again, I'm not gonna get perfect coverage, but I'm gonna do the best I can. I probably didn't need to use that small of a brush, but I was trying not to get it on like the white part of my fish. So you're gonna wanna be careful. You might wanna tape it off if you're gonna paint your fish as well. You could paint your fish any colors that you like. You can get fun and do a real fish, like me and my, my son wanted to do a real fish. Um, or you can make it your own style of fish, whatever you can imagine, right? And so this was the other fin on that fish that was also yellow. And this is a very nice color of yellow. I like it. It's not too obnoxious. And we're just going to go in and give that a coat of yellow as well. I say that I'm a scientist and that we like to know the fish, but um, I really am. I went to a medical school. I have my master's degree in embryology, actually. A little fun fact about Julie here at Crafty Beach. And so it also had a little black stripe right here, right where the eye is. And it went all the way down the body of the fish. So I'm trying to simulate that. I wasn't sure how wide to make this stripe, so I was kind of using that original picture as a reference and kind of filling that in, trying to make it look, you know, about an even width. That bottom fin that you see there was not yellow on that fish, so I'm not gonna make that yellow. I did get a little bit of paint there, and so I went back with some ivory paint to kind of correct that, but then I changed my mind and wanted uh, my stripe to be black anyway, so <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but I kept painting it until I thought it looked like it was supposed to. And I think that looks really good. Now, it, the fish also had a black tail, so we're gonna go in here. It had a black tail with a very yellow tip. Now, I didn't think I was gonna be able to paint the black tail with the yellow tip next to each other, so I'm just gonna add the yellow tip separately. So, to get started, I just use black going all over the tail. I'm gonna stop when I get to like the body of the fish. Again, kind of using smaller brushes to try to get that on there evenly without getting my white fish all black. Now I cut another piece of rope down to make the yellow stripe. And I think my camera died right about here, but basically I use that same color of yellow and I painted it yellow. 
Now I'm just going to be able to attach that to the back and he'll have like the yellow tip on the back. Now for a little eye, I thought a seashell would be perfect. This is one of the ones from the little jars at the Dollar Tree. I'm just turning it upside down to kind of make that cool like concave shape like an eye, right? And I attached that with hot glue right on its black stripe like that fish. It also had a little fin here. So I thought I would just use a, a little white seashell that I have and kind of glue that on as a really whimsical, fun little fish fin. It kind of looks like a fish fin, but it's also a seashell, so that's always fun. And I think this little guy's coming together. He's definitely more colorful than the other DIYs we did today, but I think he's gonna be perfect out in the Florida room. So it's time to attach our yellow stripe here to the back. I just do a bead of hot glue on that last fin, and then I'm gluing my yellow stripe on. Definitely easier than trying to paint them together. Or I guess you could always use a little bit of painter's tape if you need to make yours very colorful right next to each other too. But I think it looks like my inspiration butterfly fish. What do you guys think? Now I'm gonna draw a little eye on inside the shell just to kind of make it look more like an eye. And the, the fin on the original one had like little tint of yellow. So I thought we would go in with that same yellow paint and just kind of like paint in the grooves of the shell. I can always wipe off the excess paint um, on the shell with a baby wipe, kind of leave in like the yellow in the grooves to kind of give it just a light yellow tint, right? Because we're going for scientifically accurate on this fish. <laughs> and I'm just going to use the existing cage to hang it. So I'm not going to make a hanger or anything like that. But I think this is a fun remake. Very whimsical. Here is our little Hawaiian chevron butterfly fish, I think it was. I think he's so funny. <laughs> My son totally got a kick out of this one. So colorful, I love it. I love snorkeling. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to tell you that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're gonna get early access to my videos, perks, and member shout outs. I have eight Crafty Beach Fun members now, so I wanna give a huge thank you to Coastal Couple, I Am Mojo Jojo, Karen O'Haran, Leanne, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Pamela Bergeron, and Sally Cooper. Thank you so much for supporting me here at Crafty Beach and it keeps these videos rolling out. But it's time for the final reveal. Don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. Okay, you ready to see? Let's do it. Vision that I 
so much for watching if you'd like to watch more crafty beach youtube thinks you might enjoy this video right here